Okay, this is a, a video, a quick demonstration on setting up the cycler for a peritoneal dialysis patient. You will have the doctor's order in Epic, and normally you will need um, two six liter bags of solution. And if they have, so here's a six liter. You wanna check the strength, expiration, amount, and leaks. So the strength is 1.5% in two places here. The expiration is August of 2022. The amount is six liters and make sure there's no leaks. You can open the bags by here. It's normal for them to have some condensation in there, but should not have any leaks. If they do, you just throw them away. These clamps can also be used to open the bags. You don't have to press very hard. And again, check them like you would any medication. And you will be able to scan the MAR for the patient's name and the barcode there for each solution. This is extra meal. It is made out of starch instead of dextrose. So it has its own special line when it comes to the cycler. You have a bag, a Baxter automated PD set with cassettes, four prong. We can go ahead and open those. Um, drain bags, 15 liter, they come in two per bag. So you will only need one package every two days. It has a shiny side and then a cloudy side. It'll go shiny side up. You should always be able to see through that effluent that's drained out of the patient. If you have a patient that has more than, say, um, 14 liters um, for their total therapy, you're gonna need two drain bags. So you'll want to get one of these APD drain manifolds and you will use it to connect the two drain bags to the drain line on the set. So you take one of these big bags, turn on your machine back right, place one of the six liter bags on top of the machine, it's a heater, and this little uh, silver circle here is the thermostat. So you'll place it like that. If you want to, you can flip these around. Um, sometimes the necks go naturally that way. So you might wanna flip it around so it's laying on top. So we'll put the other six liter bag up there. Last fill extra meal. Um, I'm just gonna set the drain bag there for now. And this blue thing is the patient organizer. It holds the lines. Sometimes they fall out easily, so just put them back in there. Easier said than done. Do not, whoops. Do not ever force this open. Like right now, it, you can't press it down. I did that by accident. Um, you should press go and be able to hear, check patient weight. So we had shut off this machine and turned it back on. Um, you have to go above 70 kilograms to have this work. Um, it's only for adults. We are not for pediatrics in this hospital. So get to 70 and then just confirm it, press enter. And then press stop again. It goes back to the cycles and the dwell time. So now it says press go again to start. Um, you could kind of hear that little release um, and then this should open easily. It did open kind of easily before, but um, this is just like a puzzle piece. It's kind of like a cassette. It only fits in there one way. You wanna push it in there snugly. 
And then make sure that uh, this tubing doesn't get caught in the door. Then you gotta kind of just hold it shut and push that lever down. Um, patient organizer has a slot here and a little button. You just snap it over just like that. Then you wanna clamp all the solution lines starting with the blue one. Do not clamp the patient line. That's a little different. It's on the high side here. So there's one, two, three, four, and there's also one down here on the drain line. This is just a sample port. You want to make sure that you clamp that, otherwise you're going to have a mess. Now you want to connect your drain bag. Um, again, close this large sample port or you will have a mess. And then you take the drain line, you start from the right, take this off. This is where you would use the drain manifold if you had two drain bags. We are not for this patient. So you just screw it on there and shiny side up, like I said. If there's any doubt that you can, can't see through that bag in the morning when that patient's done, he probably has an infection and you want to save that bag and call the doctor right away. Um, so go to press go again. And I could have done that sooner. It's gonna go through self-testing and you'll hear the door kind of tighten and close around that cassette. It's just testing that the um, integrity of that cassette to make sure that there's no holes in it or anything. So I like to flip these over. Um, of course, everything's sterile. So if there's anything um, broken or not intact, you wanna throw it away and get new supplies. These little blue things are called frangibles and that is not broken. And the pull ring is on there. So um, in real life, when the patient's at home, the cycler should be about the same height as the person laying in bed. If um, the cycler can be 12 inches higher or 12 inches lower than the patient's body. If it's higher, it's going to drain slower if it's lower than the patient, it's going to drain faster, which could increase drain pain. But just so it's generally within that 12 inches higher or lower would be fine. So now it's flashing back and forth between um, open connect bags and open the clamps. So I like to pull these off. This is not gonna contaminate itself. It's got this little ring around it. You grab Oops, I kind of did that backwards. I usually do the heater bag first. Um, so red is hot, that goes to the heater bag. But since I have that one open, I'm gonna take the next white line and screw that connection on. So sorry about that. So red is hot, it goes to the heater bag. And here's where I say that that thing is not going to contaminate itself. It's sitting there on top of that bag. So again, you make that connection sterilely and screw it on. So I usually go red, white, and blue. Um, just not used to it being down here. Um, and our third last fill bag goes to the special line with the blue one. This is only for extra needle because it does not mix with the other solutions. So the red line, and these two white lines will mix together. This one will not. Um, so open the clamps. You wanna break your frangibles. Make sure there's good space in between there. Open the clamps, break frangibles. Open clamp, break frangible, and open clamp. This is still clamped and the patient line is open because you want that to prime. So press go. Your machine is now priming.
You don't need to sit here and babysit it while it's priming. You can come back to it. Uh, it takes about seven, eight minutes. And when you come back to it, it will flash back and forth between connect patient and check patient line. Check patient line is going to want you to verify that the fluid went all the way up to this patient line. And we will show that again when we show you how to connect the patient.